Hey, what's going on, tech enthusiasts? Bo HD here. I hope you guys are doing well. You're watching Last Week in Tech, the show where we talk about all the top tech news stories from last week, this week. As always, you can send in your tech news story suggestions to me on Twitter using the Last Week in Tech hashtag. That's hashtag LWIT. But uh, a lot has happened in the last week or two that I have talked to you. Uh, side note, if you guys uh, want to get caught up on all of the Last Week in Tech episodes, you can watch them all through the playlist that I set up. So yeah, you guys can go do that. But the biggest story in quite some time, the story that I wanna talk about first, actually doesn't come from this planet. It comes from another planet from our solar system. The planet is called Mars, you might've heard of it. NASA scientists have actually found evidence of flowing liquid water on Mars. That's liquid H2O that flows from crater walls and canyons over the summer months on Mars, according to researchers and that might actually seriously raise the risk of finding some form of life on the planet. The water may rise up from underground ice or aquifers or even condense out of the very thin Martian atmosphere, but the fundamental element of life, or at least life as we know it, is water. It's H2O, and the discovery of water on Mars makes it very possible to have a habitable environment on the red planet. In non-Martian and Earth-like news, Stephen Hawking spilled some of his knowledge his insight, his opinion of capitalism, the predominant economic system here in the US. He said we should really be scared of capitalism, not robots, after he made several statements earlier about how artificial intelligence will eventually take over the world. He went on to predict that economic equality will skyrocket as more jobs become automated and the rich owners of machines refuse to share their fast proliferating wealth with the 99% of the population. It really depends on how things are distributed. If machines produce everything we need, everyone can enjoy a life of luxurious leisure if the machine produced wealth is shared. Or most people can end up miserably poor if the machine owners successfully lobby against wealth redistribution. So far, the trend seems to be toward the second option, with technology driving ever-increasing inequality. Wow, I once again think Stephen Hawking is absolutely right. At least here in the US, we have a serious problem with income inequality, where the top 1% owns a majority of the wealth. On a global scale, half of the world's wealth is now in the hands of 1% of the population, which ultimately is terrifying and just needs to change. Unfortunately, change takes time, and it only happens ultimately from those passionate about change. The more people who are aware of rapid inequality here in the US, or in the world, the more we the people will be able to elect someone to represent the people. The tricky part is to elect someone who isn't supported by corporations, or in other words, the top 1%. I don't wanna get terribly political, and I'm not gonna tell you how to vote, but I will say voting is important regardless of what anyone says or how corrupt your government may be. The worst thing you can do is not vote. The second worst thing you could do is be misinformed, so do your research. But in capitalistic consumerism tech news, Android 6.0 Marshmallow has been rolling out to select Nexus devices this past week. Have you received your update? I still need to flash my update. I actually have been running the developer preview three on uh, of Android 6.0 Marshmallow on my Nexus 6, and it actually won't receive the over the air update because I'm running the dev preview. So I will need to flash it. I haven't flashed it yet but I will. Galaxy S7 rumors are already happening. Can you believe it? It feels like this year just went like that. But uh, the latest rumors say that Samsung may actually launch three Galaxy S7 variants, each with a different processor. Samsung may launch a Galaxy S7 variant with an Exynos 7422 processor in India, an S7 variant with an Exynos 8890 processor in Korea, Japan, in the European markets, and an S7 variant with a Snapdragon 820 processor in the US and China. So this would be the first time Samsung would launch a flagship smartphone with three different processors, but the good news is that each processor looks more beefy and faster, basically, than the processors found in current flagship smartphones of 2015. Now, Apple released some new tech gadgets. It actually updated the 21.5-inch iMac with a Retina 4K display, and it lowered the price of the 27-inch 5K iMac by about 8%, I believe. They also updated the Apple trackpad and the Apple keyboard, favoring built-in batteries that charge over a lightning cable, as well as a fresh new design. The new trackpad is wider, and it now features Force Touch, allowing you to actually click anywhere on the 
pad itself, which you couldn't do before on the older trackpad. The keyboard is now a single slab of metal that slopes downward from the top to the bottom, and the keys are made ever so slightly wider by reducing the air gap around them. The Apple Magic Mouse also got updated, but it's only slightly longer and it no longer requires batteries. The new accessories are pretty damn expensive. The new trackpad is $130, the new keyboard is $100, and the new Magic Mouse is $80. All three accessories that got updated, they all got updated prices. All the prices are higher. With that said, I'm gonna leave you pondering about some science news, some tech news, and some possible dysphoria news in regards to our income inequality. Yeah, but uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It really does help show your support and help support my channel. Um, feel free to click the subscribe button if you're brand new to my channel. But as always, I'm Bo HD. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next video. See ya.